I'm so happy that I can actually see so many people around here because I assume that this is the third day and I assume that many of you could maybe catch a flight or um, visit in some other places because it's real sunny today. It's, it's uh, great weather since last few days. We had a really bad, severe weather storm, that kind of things. Um, but um, OK, let's start. Um, Today, I, I'd like to talk to you something um, very uh, you might nor not normally see, uh, because that's the project in China, and I'm going to talk about it in uh, the, the China China based project. And um, first of all, let us uh, let me introduce me just a little bit, because um, I think none of you know me or none of you know Open Euler. Maybe some of you had visited the Open Euler booth uh, a few days ago and um, had a little talk about our staffs at, around the booth. But um, exactly about the globalization part, I think uh, most of you don't know much about it. So um, my name is Helen and um, I'm currently at the G11 and SIG as a maintainer of the Open Euler community, and I have five years or more experience in technical translation and localization. So um, basically, I majored in translation, so I'm uh, pretty new to tech stuffs, but I uh, did have a few years experience on techno technical translation. And I came to uh, know Open Euler about two to three years ago. And now I did uh, community operations part of Open Euler and I do social media stuff, social media promotion. Maybe some of you might see me at a uh, LinkedIn. And um, I had a great passion. I have a great passion on social media operations and open source and um, some fun tech stuffs. So this is my LinkedIn profile. Maybe if you're interested, let's connect. And let's begin the story. Um, I used a AI generated picture. It's about um, a Bible story. It's the power of Babel. I think most of the Western world knows that because that's um, a very famous story. And it says that um, once there was a Tower of Babel and people uh, wanted to build that, but due to the confused language made by God, uh, so the tower cannot be actually built. Um, that, I think it's the same situation as we are facing today, because um, in this open source world, uh, a lot of people come from many different places, and um, lots of you might speak English, but in Asia countries, uh, in uh, some other countries and other regions, a lot of people might not speak English as their native language, especially in China. Uh, people are, are especially tech uh, engineers and uh, for people who do open source and who are currently uh, sur uh, surfing on the internet and doing GitHub uh, projects, they are not familiar with English. So. Um, Let's see this chart. Um, developers' year-on-year -year growth in, in Asia really surges. You can see this is a, a statistics by a GitHub report, annual report, and uh, there are many uh, developers from Asian countries in Singapore, in India, in Hong Kong, uh, China, Vietnam, um, Indonesia, that kind of countries who don't speak English as their mother tongue as their native language, but uh, we all know that uh, the fact is that uh, documentation is, docu is dominated by English. So um, that's the real problem. Uh, people really, mm, they are speaking their own mother tongues and they are writing uh, stuff using their mother language, but um, they have to read uh, English files, English documentations in most of the situation. Um, so that's where, um, also you can check this. This is a geographic heat map of developer populations around the world. Uh, besides the most famous places that we all know, the uh, European and also US, there are lots of um, other areas that are not um, 
uh, before they are not really committed in the open source projects, but now uh, actually lots of people in China, in Japan, in Korea, that kind of uh, regions, they really uh, had a lot of con uh, developers contributing to open source projects. And we all know that uh, in many famous open source foundations like CNCF, like uh, Linux Foundation, we have a uh, board of uh, we have a member of boards who are from China, from Japan, from other uh, non-English speaking countries. So um, that's what I really want to say is um, that we have to take what we've built bro uh, uh, locally and make it available globally. Because uh, now in China, people, uh, developers especially, they write documentation in Chinese. And we had that, we had this pipeline to, uh, be, the, uh, at, from the beginning, it is Chinese documentation. And then we translate that into English and spread that to the global audience. So um, this is basically the pipeline. But um, there is uh, many challenges in that. And in my later presentation, I will, uh, really uh, dive deep into that challenges and I really look forward to uh, the answers from all of you because that's uh, a uh, public concern and I think I don't really have the answers so today it's uh, just a practice of uh, this uh, special interest group of us. And um, for Open Euler, I think um, these few days, uh, you have all know about this name, but this is actually a China-based program. It's an open source Linux-based operating system, and it starts in China about uh, four years ago. And I, I actually, I met Open Euler about two to three years ago. That's uh, exactly the time when Open Euler, the, the, the high levels of Open Euler directors, they, they, they wanted to go abroad because they decided that um, we have really big market share in China and that's what we want to uh, let people uh, in other countries and in the globe know about Open Euler. And that's uh, when we, when I know Open Euler, mm, and it's the exact perfect timing because uh, me and my colleagues started a special interest group in the Open Euler community, which is called uh, G11N. Uh, that is the short version for globalization. And um, our uh, sick group, um, we have the mission to uh, let uh, the stuffs let the information from China to go out to the globe and bring um, as many as the um, information and uh, fund tax stuffs and developer contributions um, in chi into China. So that is basically our mission. And we have these fantastic uh, maintainers and also many uh, committers in, in our uh, G11N group now. So um, we basically we have over uh, 30 uh, contributors, uh, active contributors in this group. And what we did in these two years, um, the first step is starting with documentation because documentation is really the foundation of everything. And today I know it's the um, uh, doc tech uh, conference and we have to uh, narrow it into documentation. And this is the first step we do because um, in China, we have this kind of a host platform like GitHub. In China, we call it Gitty. And most developers would contribute things on Gitty instead of GitHub. So there's tons of uh, repositories, software rep repositories on Gitty. Uh, without a proper English translation, even if, uh, even though uh, the the they are, uh, many of them can speak English, but they cannot write a proper English, and also they are not willing to write English as their first language. Um, so, um, for Open Euler project, we have around uh, 200 rep software repositories, and the README files are all in Chinese. I think 90% of them are in Chinese. So we started 
uh, what we started to do is to translate those readme files in English and do the polishing work because mm, you know uh, in in Chinese the ways of thinking the logic is totally different from Western world and the English speaking so um, the writing logic is also different so what we have to do is uh, besides translation from the original Chinese version, we have also to edit those translations and reformat it and um, polishing the, 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 um, the structure to make it sound natural in an English speaking world. And this is the first thing we do. After we're finishing uh, those uh, readme file translation and also the uh, documentation, some of the documentation translation, uh, it's uh, around half a year to one year. And we began to find a big problem is that um, this open Euler community is a very vibrant community in China and it has a lots of software pass, uh, packages and repos and PRs and issues raised every day. And uh, our team is around, um, the active contributors are around uh, 9 to 10 people. And even though we counted the, uh, um, the, mem the, the students from the universities, that's around 30. So it's not enough um, people for us to track simultaneously with those things. Um, we even don't know. Uh, they updated the documentation, they updated the readme files, but we don't know. Um, we have to check maybe one week, we have to check it and find that there's um, dozens of documentation that we need to translate. So it's, um, it's a hard problem and we have to think of smarter ways to um, solve that problem. That's when we think about the CI. Um, so um, after negotiating and discussing, a uh, lot of discussions with the doc team and uh, the infrastructure team, uh, we started to add this, uh, this process uh, into the CI system. Um, so actually when the translation source is updated, the Chinese source is updated, there is a CI bot who would generate the uh, translation issues to the, to the team and the maintainers would receive that issue and uh, we would translate these things uh, whenever we would use AI based translation and polish that or we can directly trans that, translate that from manual work. And then we would submit a PR and um, uh, there were tech people who are actually writing those stuff. They would review the PR and they decided can it actually be merged because the translation might be, um, uh, we, we might mis make mistakes in the translation. So if they decided that it's okay, it's cool, it can be merged. So yes, the translation process is done and it can be merged to the um, um, official repo. And so um, that process, it's enough for us at that time. But uh, when the translation task gets bigger and bigger, and we have a website also, we have an open Euler official website, and all of the documentations are on the, on the official website. So, um, so we started to think that if um, any one of you uh, who are reading this documentations and find a real problem and want to change it, what can you do? Because uh, at that time, we, we began to have uh, some international readers or contributors from outside China, and they decided that maybe they wanted to contribute to Open Euler. And the first step, maybe they wanted to contribute to the documentation. And it's hard for them to use Gitty from um, outside China because we have um, that uh, internet problems. And um, at that time, we think it's time to release a light PR and people can really, um, you know, they, they don't need to submit a PR on Getty or GitHub or, or whatever the host platform is. They can just directly um, use light PR to adjust the, the original documentation on the website. And um, when the, the adjustment is done, it uh, directly 
also sends us uh, sends to the reviewer and they decide whether the review can be done and they decide whether the 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 the, the adjustment the optimization of the documentation is great for them to merge into the uh the, the current system so um these are the two methods that we uh, used to tackle documentation uh, uh, synchro, yeah, synchronize that with CI. So um, we've made some progress and milestones. Uh, besides the documentation translation part, um, we decided that we have to open up social media channels because social media is also another um, great thing that we can actually promote our uh, uh, the, the stuffs, um, the information, the technologies, the innovations to the rest of the world. Uh, because you also know that in China and the rest of the world, the social media thing is totally different. We have two systems. So um, people from outside China, they cannot um, actually, uh, they cannot read the stuffs in Chinese social media. And we also cannot um, directly um, access to uh, the social media from outside. Um, so um, we decided that we open up link, uh, open up social media channels like uh, Twitter, like YouTube, um, and like uh, LinkedIn, so that people can get a quick access to what we update and the information that the community, uh, the, the latest information of the community. And um, for around uh, one year and um, half, maybe, so the um, channels, the, st the statistics you can see, we are getting more and more people who are watching um, Open Euler and they want to know what Open Euler really is. Um, and that is the uh, mission that we continue to do because uh, we have to continue to tell people what Open Euler is. Um, this is real abstract word for people around, uh, people outside China. Um, so. Uh, now we have uh, like this, you can see the, those contributors who contributed to Open Euler and the social media uh, channels that we opened. These are all the process progress and milestones. But um, actually when we are doing these kind of things, we realize that just having documentation in English isn't good enough because um, most of my team members they are actually majoring in um, translation, they are actually majoring in literature, and they come to contribute to the translation project out of curiosity and out of passion, but they really don't know nothing um, or don't know much about uh, the, 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 what Linux operating system is, and they have to learn through the translation project. So that's where we make mistakes. Um, so, uh, based on the translation things we uh, delivered, that's only available documentations. That's not useful documentations. So I think especially for um, ch uh, from Chinese version to English version, version, the English version might actually get to um, available version for technically available for people outside China to use. Maybe if you want to find an API, you can uh, browse from our documentation and find that, and you can find a code, uh, but you didn't really uh, understand what the project is, and you didn't really understand what innovation, what's the difference between Open Euler and the other projects in uh, other Linux distros. That's also a common question that people come to the booth to ask, what's the difference between Open Euler and other uh, Linux distros? There are tons of Linux distros, right? So um, um, we have to think about uh, put the documentation uh, to English and um, go further to make the translation useful. So um, I remembered once I read, um, I just Googling, randomly Googling, and I uh, came across this sentence. Um, what is uh, developer experience? It's all about how easily and effectively developers can get things done. So that's what our new mission is. We began to think about doc, uh, developer experience. 
And when we focus on developer journey, our first mission is to improve developer experience. Now we have the first step down. We have made all the documentation in English. And uh, next step, we have to focus on developer experience to make more developers uh, actually find our documentation useful and uh, they gain the information, they gain knowledge uh, through our documentation. So um, based on this chart, you can see uh, we've classified the stages into discover, evaluate, learn, build, and scale. And these are the five stages of developer experience, um, the, uh, of developer journey. And from the internal touch points and external touch points, um, I think what we can do, what our SIG can actually do is very limited because as I said before, we are not real tech person. We know very little about tech, but uh, we still have our strengths to do that. Um, that's where we focus on the um, documentation, uh, the product, and social media. So um, you can see here, I have marked two stars on this chart. One is product and docs, and the other is social media. Um, we did a lot of things around that. And let me show you. We have two new approaches this year. Um, the first one is to make content uh, visual, more visual. Because at that time, uh, uh, during the first stage, we had all the information, maybe um, 2 million words in Chinese and all translated that into English. And it's a tons of um, words of documentation. It's so long and so hard to read. So we have to abstract those things into easy, clear, and concise English so that people can get to understand what you are talking about, what you want to do, what you want to achieve. So um, we made those uh, brochures. I think some of you might have already seen it because it's uh, already at our booth. And we uh, used these uh, A4 pages to make people to understand what is Open Euler. And we did a lot of tutorials, video tutorials from um, our tech experts and also um, uh, the, the special interest group members. Uh, we did a lot of tutorials about the, uh, what is Open Euler and how do you set up the environment and how do you use it on cloud, where you can find it besides the cloud. Maybe you can find it at other places. You know, we have a slogan is Open Euler is everywhere, but um, I think, um, it's right now it's just a slogan and it's not accessible, uh, very, very accessible. So we have to tell people how to um, really use and really experience Open Euler at different places. So we made all those tutorials. And also uh, during the two year experience, I came across so many people who really Asked, asked me about basic questions about Open Euler. So I think FAQ is, is a pretty good, cool idea because I've seen so many famous and mature uh, projects in open source world like CNCF and like that stuff. So they have those FAQs very clear and concise and for people to understand the basic information about that, that's very important to a project like us to start the first step from China to abroad. So um, we made FAQs and it's, a re it's released at our official website just uh, maybe uh, two months ago. Um, also, what we did um, is make uh, SEOs uh, because SEO is very important for Google um, optimization, for Google search. And um, because our staffs our website is originally in Chinese. And if we directly translate that Chinese website to English, um, it's not attractive enough for Google. So um, we have to change the format to change what we um, speak and to line out the, what's most important for people outside China to understand um, 
what you're talking, what you're selling, and what you want to provide for global audiences. So um, we also made those SEO optimization. That's the first approach to make content visual. And the second approach is to teach a man to fish. Um, I find it very interesting that we both, in our culture, uh, we both have this similar saying is to teach a man to fish is better than just provide a man a real fish. Uh, because, uh, you know, at our community, we have limited amount of people who are uh, who have experience in translation and who have experience in uh, formatting and transcreation, that kind of things. But we have um, millions of developers in China who can actually write uh, documentation in Chinese. So what we want them to know is um, how they can write in Chinese, write in better Chinese that we can translate easier to English. Uh, we don't need that much reformatting, that much restructuring, and the, the audiences in um, other countries can uh, read easier and get to know things easier. So um, the colleagues, the team members in, in G11N also write uh, uh, different kinds of guidelines about how to write, um, how, to, how to contribute to the translation, how to write technical blogs, how to do interviews, how to uh, make blah, 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 that kind of things, because we think that's valuable for people outside this field. Because I think um, in the language field and the technical field, there are two different kinds of fields that people who normally won't cross. So we have to teach them um, what really matters to us so that they can contribute stuff that really matters to the rest of the world. Um, so that's basically what we are doing for these two years. But um, we also encounter a lot of challenges and some are solved, some are not solved. So um, right now, the current challenges are two. First of all, uh, you know, just like I mentioned, translation doesn't equal to native English. Um, we, we are doing our best, we want to do the best, we search all the Google stuff, um, we ask the experts what they really want to express, and we ourselves study the, the, the guidelines, uh, the study, the tech book tech books of Linux operating system about um, all those cloud native, all those things, but we are not a native person in tech, so um, our translation quality can still be improved. Um, I don't know um, how to uh, actually solve this problem because I think it will remain a problem, but that's the reason I'm uh, sharing with you guys here. And I think uh, because um, some of you uh, are also translating the documentations from English to other languages, rather uh, maybe not Chinese, maybe not uh, Japanese or Korean, but in European languages. And maybe you are uh, also encountering uh, the, 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 the same issues like I did. So um, this is also an open question. And about the documentation delays, this is um, a very recent problem that I encountered because Open Euler just released its 24.03 version. It's a long-term release version, and it has about millions of words in Chinese who would, uh, which, which would need uh, translation. And our team, uh, you know, it's very narrow team, and we will need maybe two months to translate all the, 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 the words into an English and give the global audience uh, an, a full English version. But um, the release version on cloud, on Docker Hub, on, 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 so, uh, on, on the uh, website, that is open to all the, uh, around the world the same day as the Chinese version is ready. So um, that basically means that there is a timing, uh, there, is, there is this gap that we already have a Chinese version translation and we already have the software ready for a global audience to download, but um, there are no 
uh, English version translation. So people have to download, you know, DIY their download, and they do all the steps with all, without a proper guidance. Um, or they have to wait around two months or three months to actually get, get a um, formal English version. So that documentation delay, I think, is also a problem because we are all contributing to the open source by our own means, um, by, by curiosity, by passion, by love. Um, we are not doing it. I think most of the people are not doing it uh, uh, and they get paid. So it's not our real job to do that. We have other jobs, right? So um, we can't force the translation team to like, okay, we get a Chinese version and the next day you have to get a English version ready. So um, I think it's our uh, current challenges, the two major challenges right now we face. And um, I hope in the um, Q and A version, uh, in the Q and A session, maybe we can um, uh, just uh, dive deeper into these challenges. And I really want to hear what your uh, practices would be. And um, I think open source should be accessible to to all because um, really it is now dominated by uh, you know U.S. countries. You, by U.S. and European and um, a lot of countries um, speaking English, but in China and in other less developed countries, people or developers would actually also want to contribute to open source. So that uh, is the meaning that I want to share here. Um, people from non-English speaking countries, they have the right to contribute to open source they, and they have the right to get the knowledge um, from other open source projects. So um, how do we tackle uh, language barriers together? I think that is an, a big question that I want to talk to you. I want to ch chat with you um, today or later at um, LinkedIn or other events. Um, so um, that's basically all of my presentation and um, a huge thanks to all of you who listened. Um, and uh, if you want more chats, please find us at, at the, the Boost D2. And also I have listed the uh, G11 and SIG ripples. If you are uh, interested, you can search that. But I'm not guaranteed that you can actually um, you know, get access to Gitty because it's in China, yeah. <laughs> and we have already have a mirror ripple on GitHub. If you're interested, you can also search Open Euler on G11N on GitHub also. Okay. Thank you. Um, do you have any questions? Okay. Thank you, Helen. Thank you for a um, really good presentation. Uh, what I wanted to ask is we're also kind of approaching the task to localize the documentation, but what kind of there is a concern that um, when you have a, like in any like language that is main from which you are doing the translations, it kind of can hold your creativity in doing the rework. So uh -huh. Like each time when you will be like, okay, I need to rewrite this section or I want yeah. to add some specific context or I want to change the information architecture. You're like, but it, it will be translated to like one language or a few languages and it may like cost company yeah. some additional money. So when you're having only one main language, you're more free to make any reworks, mm -hmm. like making documentation better. Have you ever experienced something like that? And like how you handle challenge um, like this. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what you mentioned right uh, just now, I, I, I came across a similar issue in China because our team um, in, in China, when the source language is Chinese and we translated that into English, and if we want further translation versions like um, German, like Japanese, like other languages, uh, the, 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 the translator have to translate 
from the English version to another version. They cannot directly translate from Chinese version to the other languages. So um, there's there's uh, information loss. You see, we when we translate that from English uh, from from Chinese to English, we already lose some information. And when people translate from our, you know, uh, less accurate version of English and into other languages, there would be more information loss. And I'm really worried that if um, people who would really actually use the software, who would actually use the, the, our documentation guidelines, um, they, 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 they come across those things. And what if the information loss is too much and the, the meaning is different, and they cannot actually handle things correct. They cannot actually deploy correctly. So um, I think um, the best thing to do is um, you, you, the translator have to know tech stuffs. Yeah, they have to know the, 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 the thing they are translating in order to uh, bring as much as possible information to the, to the audience. Yeah. I'm the co-speaker of Halib. Maybe I can answer these questions furthermore. And first, uh, actually for our translators, and uh, we have uh, uh, already customized, customized a specific some roles, translation roles. For example, translators can do what word word and cannot do what word word. All the things we have already settled down in our roles specifically. For example, uh, for the technical specifications, and also for the codes, such kind of things, uh, uh, they already uh, existed in Ch English. So we cannot to translate those things. Uh huh. And also uh, for uh, uh, for um, for uh, for the English to another language, uh, Chinese to English, and English to other language, and we need to keep all the important things uh, should be. Um, exactly correct yeah that's the basic roles for our translators and also the basic requirements for us and then besides the, the uh, besides all the technical things and for the language part we try our best to optimize it from in from chinese to english and also from english to other native languages and we try to keep the uh, original meaning as it is but actually, when we made culture problems, for example, um, how to say, uh, for example, uh, in, China, in China, the red, the color red in, in, indicates increase. It's a good thing. Uh -huh. But for other, yeah, the red is decrease. So when we made such kind of problems, we needed to exchange the cultures and into correct ways. Yeah. So, uh, on one hand, we have uh, many uh, roles to, um, to specify how to do things better. And also, we have our style guide for developers and also for translators. And including, for example, uh, for some, uh, for some um, punctuations, we even, we even, um, we even uh, specify how to use punctuations in our, in our translation and include periods, comma, that kind of things. Yeah, strictly follow those things. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. I have a question around um, your processes. Um, so you mentioned that you uh, have like a, a CICD yeah. bot yeah. that effectively detects changes in the source language, mm -hmm. which is Chinese in this case, um, and, and then would create an issue. Um, and from there, I. What, what happens at that point? Is there some kind of, uh, apart from, of course, the issue, some kind of notification to translators? Um, how, how are you kind of managing the, the translating? Do you have some kind of tool in between? Um, yeah. Uh, a tooling for, uh, to, to, to dispatch this translation to who? You, you, you mean that? Yeah, so, so I guess my question is, are you just, are, are translators then just directly 
kind of using, well, Giti or mm -hmm. GitHub mm -hmm. to, to translate effectively? Um, for right now, our translators, they have to use Giti because uh, all the software repos are on Giti. So it's the source software repo for people in China. So um, we don't uh, encounter such problems. But I think if uh, some tr some contributors are directly contributed from GitHub or that kind of things, we have to use the mirror. Um, that's not real time, but it's still effective, I think. Okay. Oh, thank you. Uh, one thing you mentioned that was uh, to have a documentation um, useful, so that's uh, why the technical things also have to be um, understandable and correct. Mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned that the technical knowledge in your team is not as good. Um, how did you tackle that? Did you like um, have developers at your a team for a couple of weeks to learn something or how did you challenge that? Yeah, uh, we uh, first of all, we have those, um, you know, certifications for developers. Uh, for example, we have those free tasks, free courses on on uh, on all ki kinds of platforms like uh, Coursera, that kind of things that translators, when we want to contribute, they have to first, uh, you know, learn those steps at first and then started to contribute. But in the real cases, uh, they still encounter those kind of problems that they can't understood. Uh, and uh, or maybe they worry that they can't understood. So they have to ask. We, ha we have to ask the, the writer, the original writer. Uh, we maybe arrange some time, arrange a meeting or, or, or so that we can directly ask the writer if my understanding is correct and can I translate this sentence or this paragraph or if I have to restructure. I think uh, uh, we, we will directly ask him or ask her uh, if the translation is correct. Uh, if we can make those changes and with permission, uh, maybe he also thinks that um, the, the, the original version is not good enough. And maybe he will also change the um, original Chinese version to make it better for understanding, for read, readiness. Yes, that's our measure. Thank you very much. Measure. Okay, thank you. No. Um, yeah, I think you... Uh, Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, yeah. Glossaries, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I think the traditional way is also uh, listing those kind of glossaries and terminologies and put them in a for form and upload this form in our current translation systems. I don't know if you use SQL, Trattles, or other kind of uh, systems. We have those translation software that people can actually update those uh, terminologies or glossaries that uh, to to make sure the consistency of the whole uh, documentation. And uh, also for uh, these two years, I think AI also can do a lot when maintaining the consistency because you, you, you can ask AI to check when you finish all those translations, you can ask AI to check if the uh, words are consistent and if any of, uh, you know, confusion is made, that I think that's also very effective. Thank you. Oh, oh. Hello. Hello. 
<laughs> nice so, to know you. Um, I have a question. I once worked in a project where we did um, AI-based automatic mm -hmm. translations into five languages. Mm -hmm. But these languages were all languages that we had somewhere around in the company. So whenever we had content change, we had like automatic translations that were correct in about 95%, I would say. 95% of time. And for the usual edge case, we would just ask like um, the French kind of project if that sounds right. And um, that worked um, okay. But if we would um, include um, Chinese, let's say, mm -hmm. we have no internal employees that speak natively um, Chinese. Do you oh, think yeah. it would be even possible to do that with an AI-based solution? Or do you think it's too risky? Um, I think if for your for for your situation you have no one to rely on, and I think for that AI is already um, you you can rely on AI on some extent because that already do some work uh, uh, for for people in uh, the, the the native language speak. Yes, uh, it can also do some work, but uh, I think if you totally rely on AI. Um, right now, I'm also not um, very confident on that because AI makes some mistakes. Yeah. And I'm also uh, looking for the solutions of this because I encounter the same um, question, the same issue. Um, so um, I think that's the, that's the end of my um, presentation. And if you want to talk to me, just find me on LinkedIn. Yeah, thank you.